Hello young people. Today we shall talk about William Stanley Horton's play The Dear Departed. Horton's play is themed on the way elderly people were neglected in the early 20th century British society. This is also true for Indian society, where more and more children leave their old, infirm and aged parents alone and go far away to work. Let's see what lesson this play has to offer us about the care we owe our elders. Before we begin with the play, it's important to get to know our author a little. William Stanley Horton was an English drama writer or playwright born in 1881. He was an important member of a popular group known as the Manchester School of Dramatists. His best known play is Hindle Wakes. His other known works are Independent Means, The Younger Generation, Master of the House and Fancy Tree. He was strongly influenced by dramatists like Hendrik Ibsen, Oscar Wilde, George Bernard Shaw and St. John Hankin. His plays are written with great sympathy and insight, mostly centering on the Northern English life. Let us now move on to the play. First. The author gives us a detailed stage directions for a lower middle class household in a small British town to be shown as the place setting. The household has a lot of shabby and cheap old furniture, ornamental pieces and old American clock, evening newspapers and weekly magazines. A 70-year-old man, Abel Merriweather, is found dead in his room. At least from what we can see, the Slater household assumes he is dead while they wait for the Jordan family to arrive. Abel Merriweather is the father of Amelia Slater and Elizabeth Jordan. He had been living with Amelia Slater and her husband Henry Slater when he is declared dead. Elizabeth Jordan and her husband Ben gather at the Slater's house to mourn his loss. We are introduced to a 10-year-old girl named Victoria. Mrs. Slater scolds her for wearing colourful clothes. Apparently, she should be strictly dressed in black to do justice to the event for her grandfather's sudden death. Mr. Slater is the first to enter the Slater household as his wife and daughter wait for the guests. Mark the clothes he is wearing. A black tail coat, grey trousers, black tie and a bowler hat. Mrs. Slater orders Victoria to change into a white frock with a black slash. Their morning dresses will be in all blacks, but they are not ready yet. So the Slaters try to wear as much black color in their clothing as possible. We quickly understand that this formal dressing is shallow and does not come from a place of love or respect or sadness. They are a family of pretentious people trying to outdo their relatives in their show of grief. Soon, we see Mr. and Mrs. Slater talk to their relatives, Ben and Elizabeth. They seem to be particularly hateful towards Elizabeth and suspect that she is after her dead father's property. In fact, they believe that she'll turn up for the morning driven by greed for her share of property. The next moment, Mrs. Slater pretends to have a breakdown as she looks at certain objects in the kitchen. They belong to her father, Abel Merriweather. At the same time, she asks her husband to change into the new slippers Merriweather wore. Through this, the playwright Stanley Houghton aims to show us how shallow people like Mrs. Slater are. She has no affection or responsibility towards her dead father. Yet, she puts up a show of grief by wearing black and pretending to cry. Mrs. Slater's character shows us the evils of our society. We soon find the Slaters removing objects from the Merriweather's room. They assume that Elizabeth might be after the bureau and they act quickly to remove it before she arrives. Mrs. Slater also removes an old American clock while they are waiting. The child, Victoria, has better sense and she is shocked by her parents' activities. Her parents console her by saying that Mary, whether had passed on the bureau to them that very morning before he died. 
The slaters make sure to hide the bureau and the American clock before opening the door to their relatives, Mr. Ben Jordan and Mrs. Elizabeth Jordan. We are told at the start of the play that Mrs. Elizabeth Jordan is Mrs. Slater's sister. Immediately after the Jordans enter, we find out that they are just as corrupt and dramatic as the Slaters. Elizabeth apparently took so long to arrive because they were getting ready in their black morning dresses. Elizabeth wants to know which doctor has attended to her father, Abel Merriweather. She pretends to be shocked when she hears that the family doctor, Dr. Pringle, has not arrived yet. Mrs. Slater replies that no doctor can revive a dead man. So, Dr. Pringle's timely arrival could have done no good. She also goes on to describe how Merriweather had been in a jolly mood that morning. He had gone out to pay his insurance and probably visited the public house called Ringo Bells. On returning, he had directly retired to bed without having dinner. After listening to this, Elizabeth gets emotional and wipes off her tears and they all decide to have their tea.